I begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Today is the day 17th of the Grand Australian Ride. Today I will be riding from Perth to Geraldton and I will be stopping at the Pinnacle Desert along the way. The ride date is 16th of May 2022. The time taken was 9 hours and 15 minutes. That includes the stops I made along the way. The weather was nice, warm and dry and I finally got to take uh, down my warm uh, layers. The distance I rode was 442 kilometers approximately. The terrain uh, was uh, and the uh, the terrain was basically coastal and uh, a little bit uh, turns, and the road was straight and pretty much flat. Um, I took a fuel stop uh, at Perth just when I started, and the second fuel stop I took was at uh, Julian Bay uh, just after. Uh, uh, taking a stop at the Pinnacle Desert. Good morning. Uh, today is the day uh, 17th of the trip and it's 16th of May. Um, the last I vlog was on um, uh, the 15th day, which was the 14th of May. Um, I was traveling from Bridgetown to Perth. Um, so on day 16 which was yesterday i taken a uh, rest day so i didn't really do anything i uh, my wife had come to see me and we uh, had met with friends around uh, in perth and just spent some time around here now today i'm planning to go to geraldton that is the uh, destination of the day uh, the travel distance is around 415 uh, kilometers approximately there are two ways to go to Geraldton. One is to continue with the A1 and the other one is to go via Indian Ocean Road, which is obviously you would have guessed, which is closer to the ocean. So at one point they both get together and then it goes to Geraldton. The reason why I'm going to take the Indian Ocean uh, Road is purely because uh, I need to have a stop in the middle. I'm planning to stop at the Pinnacle Desert. It's actually, uh, it is like a desert, but it's got a lot of pinnacles in it, which is like cone shape, uh, upside down cone shape uh, uh, stone structures. It's naturally formed and it's very unique. Um, and that's a speciality of the area. So that is the highlight of the day. Uh, that's one thing. Um, before leaving for Geraldton, I'm I'm going to have a, one more stop in Perth. I'm going to go to the tire shop where I'm going to get the rear tire replaced because as I would have mentioned earlier, the tire was wearing out very rapidly due to the weight on the bike. So uh, that is the plan of the day. Approximate travel time is around five and a half hours if I don't stop anywhere. But obviously I plan to stop for tire, give a half enough, 45 minutes to an hour over there, then another hour at uh, the pinnacle. So two hours over there and then a few stops in between. So I'm estimating around eight to nine hours of travel time today. I'm planning to leave from accommodation uh, around eight o'clock. So around 8.15 I'll be at the tire shop approximately. Uh, so I'm, yeah, let's say around 8.30, so I'm uh, hoping that I would reach Geraldton by 6 or 7 at the latest. Um, so let's hope everything goes as per plan and um, the weather is good as well. I'm really hope, hoping that the weather is good today uh, because I've been have facing a lot of rain in the past few days. So yeah, that's the plan for the day and see you on the road. So we are back on uh, on the road now jay aaj sakti mat ki jay krishna ka naya lal ki jay om ganesha nama har har mahadev har so the first stop is to go to the tar shop uh, 
been riding after one day of break. So having a bit of a change there. So as when I I'm basically right now it's about seven. Right now it's 7.51, when I reach the tire shop it will be closed, so what I'm planning to do is at least get the fuel situation sorted out, so I'm going to get on my way, but stop, uh, stop at a fuel station on the way, that way I don't have to worry about it after the tires are changed, I can just simply get started on my way. So we are in Perth and on our way to um, the Pinnacle Desert and from there to Geraldton which is our destination for today and it's about 8 nearly 8 o'clock 10 minutes to 8 and as you can see today is Monday so what you see around me is the normal day traffic Perth is a fairly big city people who don't know about Perth um, Perth is actually a capital of Western Australia which is the state which when you look at Australia left half of Australia the land mass of if you cut those if you cut Australia into half vertically like that the left half is Western Australia so the left half is Western Australia and Western Australia is known for mining. So when you hear, oh, there's a lot of mining in Australia, most of it happens over here because half of the land mass of Australia is comes under Western Australia. And Perth is the capital, so you would have guessed this is where the everything to do with mining happens. So on our journey, we will see a lot of mining vehicles all right so the two pumps over here left this left is BP right is 711 so I'm thinking more on the lines of 711 the the floor slopes like that so I'm trying to keep the pump on my right because of that but anyways I'll uh, I'm trying to fill in this one 177.9 is the right I'll fill up uh, pay and then show you how much it ends up being okay until then right so I basically filled up as you can see I, I could only fill like 10.57 liters that's all I could get in 18.80 uh, was the rate so total amount and the rate was 177.9 so obviously Perth is a bigger city so the fuel in Perth is cheaper than what I have paid in the past few days Now the tires have been changed and um, see that right? <laughs> uh, tires have been changed uh, and I've got them changed over here as you could have seen earlier. Um, <coughs> basically, uh, nice guy, It's I think I got a Chinese brand, uh, not bad, uh, uh, basically I thought, thought because I'm just getting one tire change I'll get that one and then later on. In the next round I'll get both of them replaced 
Now I'm on my way finally, getting out of Perth. Um, the plan is to stop over at uh, the Pinnacle Desert and from there uh, continue. For So I'm finally making a turn from uh, Great Ocean, uh, Indian Ocean Road into uh, towards the Pinnacle Gill Desert. Uh, it's this way. Now I've lost the voice of this particular clip. Uh, it has happened a few times. Uh, uh, so I'm just uh, recording voiceover right now. Uh, so basically, uh, as we go further down, uh, we will reach the ticket office very soon and uh, as you can see over here there are a lot of different bird species as well but i've learned that uh, that flying drone is not allowed so i obviously won't be able to fly the drone over here so uh, the pinnacle desert has already started as you can see on my left hand side it's those uh, cones upside down you know cone shaped stones which are upside down uh, now we are finally at the uh, now we are at the uh, ticket office. Um, this is a voiceover, FYI, so it might not be you know in total sync with the video. The ticket charges are eight dollars for a motorcycle. Uh, different prices for different vehicles, of course. Uh, they do take uh, credit cards, so you don't have to worry about carrying. Um, um, carrying cash uh, if you're wondering what she was asking she was asking me which motorcycle it was and she was obviously a little surprised that it was a Royal Enfield Himalayan uh, originally British vehicle uh, obviously now made in India um, 
and yeah she explained to me what the routes are how to you know just stay on the track don't go off the track and there are parking spots along the actual track um it's fairly safe to ride motorcycle uh it will be unsurfaced road so but that should not have a problem with this bike um and uh, yeah the track starts just beyond the parking lot now if you have caravans or uh, uh, longer vehicles uh, obviously and trailers attached to your vehicle then uh, i think you are not allowed to ride through the uh, route because at a lot of places the trail gets a little bit narrower uh, which could damage uh, the pinnacle if you are turning around and stuff um now the route starts on the other side of the parking lot so i'll let's see where it is There you go I can see it now so here we go it all starts so obviously the uh, the track is unsurfaced and there it is I can see it now <laughs> uh these are the pinnacles as you can see on both sides uh, it clearly states no flying drones over here um and wow now that is all natural believe it or not and as you can see the track is a bit narrow uh it's okay for uh, you know cars but not long vehicles i believe no climbing on the pinnacles of course
Okay, so I must have spent about 45 minutes to an hour or so, something like that. Uh, now I'm finally, um, I think, coming to the end of the track. So I'll get going from here. And uh, um, uh, yes, there it is. That's where it ends. And um, now we continue with our journey. So the Pinnacle experience was definitely worth it. I would say certainly come over here if you're passing by if you want if you have to make a slight detour Bay, so that's J -U -R. Bay, so that's J -U -R -I -E -N. <laughs> and uh, just fill up the petrol that's uh, 10.91 liters the total cost was 19.63 uh, so that's 179 I think that's 179 cents per liter or something. Yep. Yep. So, if it's all filled up now and I'm on my way, uh, maybe I'll stop for a coffee or so, or maybe not. I'm not sure. Yeah, it was 179.9 per liter. So, yep. Now, so this is Julian Bay. Um, we are on uh, highway straight route number 60 right now. Now, further down this road is going to join into um, route one. A little behind, there was a option to join route one, but the but the problem was uh, you had to go 50 kilometers on the right and then join so it'll just be unnecessary riding whereas I already have like uh, uh, a pretty long day today I'm going to just stop here for a cup of coffee yeah, looks good uh, that one looks better Yep, so I'll stop it stop for a cup of coffee and then I'll get going uh, I'll update when I once I get started Just had a lunch break at Miraki cafe Had a crossover Cheese and tomato And uh, coffee And yeah, it was uh, Good coffee good crosser So yeah I think made a good call as well because I was about to stop at another cafe and I thought, ah, oh, you know what, let's just drive a little and find another one. Anyways, now I've removed my uh, warm layers now, finally, after the past few days of rain and cold. Uh, we are about roughly uh, 200 kilometers. Uh, to uh, Geraldton um, um, looks like a popular holiday spot uh, for people from Perth uh, there's a nice beach on the left hand side I'm sure there will be sufficient accommodation around here um, but yeah, it's uh, not enough distance for me to stop over here, so, but of course if you are planning a trip uh, and if you just want to do 200Ks, Julian Bay is a good place to stop, I guess. But I'm going to get going uh, and I'll update you uh, if I find something interesting on the way. Otherwise, see you on the road.
that is the Indian Ocean. I'm seeing the Indian Ocean for the first time in Australia. Beautiful. And uh, this is the Indian Ocean Drive that I'm riding on. State route number 60, that's Indian Ocean, uh, that's route, uh, the route is called Indian Ocean Drive. Like we have the Great Ocean Road in near Melbourne. But Melbourne is different, you know, the beach is, uh, the ocean is right next to you. Whereas with this one, it's a bit farther away. That was the closest point I have seen so far where the ocean gets that close. If it does get close again, then I'll probably cover it. Meanwhile, it all looks like this. <laughs> I stopped to take a small break to drink water. Now it's parked. I was parked. And uh, hey, uh, the bike fell but not on the obviously I had the side stand on the surface was not level maybe not leveled enough and the bike fell uh, on the right hand side on this side and uh, I, I was not able to lift it up because of all the luggage and everything I don't know what happened uh, And um, yeah, there was this gentleman, the one who I just waved, he stopped by and he actually was kind enough to help me lift it up. Now, we're like a hundred kilometers away. Few things I'm worried about, obviously the frame, this frame on that side, because that side was down, looks like a little bent maybe and um, the mirror is shaking a little bit maybe it's gone loose um, I'm just worried about the silencer hopefully that's not bent but otherwise so far so good there was no leakage or anything like that um, the luggage seems intact I think it's because of the soft luggage, it secured the bike a little bit, but I am certainly shaken up a little bit. Um, I've never had a bike fallen like this, let alone in such a remote location. And that too because I simply wanted to stop to have, a, have some water and a short break. But anyways, uh, all good so far. Hopefully we'll get to Geraldton without any problems whatsoever. Jai Mother. Highway, which is actually A1, Route A1. Geraldton is uh, 96 kilometers from here. So, it's 3.30 now. Should be there by 4.30, hopefully. 4.30, 5 o'clock max.
All right. So after all the drama today, uh, including the ones where I dropped the bike, um, I'm finally in Geraldton. I think I must have ridden at least uh, in the region of around 450 kilometers. 415.15 was actually what I had originally seen uh, in the on Google Maps. But in reality, I think I should have gone above that. I'm estimating roughly 450, maybe less than that, between 425 and 450. So I'm actually staying at an Airbnb, so it will be in a residential area. All right, so I have arrived in Geraldton. The time is about 5.16 over here, first time, of course. <sighs> Nearly four and a half, uh, 450 kilometers right. Um, in term, not that tired, of course, uh, a little tired of uh, as it's one of the longest rides. Uh, there are only a few days in the whole tour where I'll be riding more uh, more than 350-400 kilometers and this is one of them and tomorrow again is another. Um, the plan right now is to just go out and get something to eat and then come back and just uh, do all the backups and everything and just call it a night because I've got an early start tomorrow. Now um, that's that. Secondly, um, tomorrow I'm planning to start as early as possible. Uh, tomorrow's uh, destination is actually... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tomorrow's destination is uh, Karnarvon, which is about 476 kilometers from here. So Karnarvon. So it's uh, further than what I had today but the difference is today I had to get my tires changed and everything so that took uh, some of the time in the morning tomorrow I'm going to try and leave as early as possible so possibly around 7.38 at the latest so I can get a good run in the morning even preferably around 7 7.30 if I can um, the ride today uh, very interesting stopped at uh, 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 pinnacle de desert um, basically once you get into the comp uh, the space you know obviously you can't fly drone so I couldn't fly to fly the drone but um, uh, they have like a they have created a route where you have which have, you have to follow you have to buy a ticket for eight dollars uh, for motorcycles obviously but for cars and other things the, the rates are different uh, as you go in, there is a four kilometer route that you have to follow. It's not uh, um, the route, it's actually hard sand. So it's basically, it's sandy, but very hard. So you can ride, but you have to be careful. Um, if you're riding on, riding on either tracks, then you your bike will stay stable because the cars have been running on it. But in the center, the sand is soft. So sometimes, you know, while looking around, I would probably end up, the bike would end up in the center. And due to that, and also some areas were soft. So I had a near miss fall a couple of times, or maybe three times, I think. Um, after that, I uh, went along and um, uh, I was doing well in terms of the ride. But there was a patch where there wasn't actually much of a rest area when I really wanted to stop briefly. So I did and I uh, the side of the road was very hard. So when I used my side stand, it wasn't sticking in to the ground. And because of that, the bike was standing a little bit upright than it should, more upright than it should. And it ended up falling on the other side of the side stand. So side stand is on the left hand side when I'm sitting on the bike and the bike fell on the right hand side. Uh, I didn't realize how heavy the bike had gone, got because of all the stuff uh, until when I had to actually pick it up. But luckily someone stopped. Uh, someone was actually uh, towing a, a all-terrain vehicle, ATV. 
and he just stopped in front of me and then he came and helped me out uh, i didn't record everything because uh, just didn't find it appropriate to do so uh, luckily there were there isn't any kind of visible damage to the bike hopefully there isn't anything that i can't see as well um, but overall i feel so lucky that i used the gv um, uh, engine guard which has a three point if I had used a two-point Royal Enfield one, it would have bent easily. Uh, due to the weight, definitely it would have bent because I, I could see that the bike was actually sitting on the GV engine guard. And I also took uh, advice from an expert that changed the handlebar because the bike actually fell on the handlebar. And the handlebar was intact because I had got a better one. I had replaced the company one. So that was the experience of the day. Good. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with uh, the day so far now the plan is to go out and get something to eat uh, Ger Geraldton is actually a pretty de uh, decent sized town so I'm hoping that I will I should easily find something vegetarian and that's it for the day now I'll uh, call it a day now and I'll update tomorrow morning on more details on the route on exactly what would be the interest of uh, the day or the highlight of the day. I haven't actually honestly identified it yet, but tonight I'm going to sit down and just check what's on the way and I'll try and identify at least one or two things that I can see on the way uh, to my next destination. Until then, have a good night.